Merry Christmas and happy holidays to all our viewers. We hope you're enjoying whatever festivities you're taking part in and that you've had a really good 2022. It's time to let the leftovers settle once again, look back on another year of Pedalbox, peer into 2023 and what it has to offer, as well as diving into another round of stats and figures. Last year's retrospective went down really well, so it makes sense to do another this year, not just to boost the view count and the watch time, but also to fill in the blanks, answer a few questions, and to make it feel like all the time I've spent looking over the analytics on YouTube feel a little less wasted. 2022 marked five years since we picked up a chassis on a trailer in the dark, brought it home and then tried to work out what on earth we were going to do with it, and then uploaded the first episode of Pedalbox on the 9th of October 2017. We didn't do a birthday live stream like we did last year, I was in the US making a few more videos for Road Trip and generally celebrating turning one year older by going to Six Flags Magic Mountain. We hit a thousand subscribers in 2020, almost three years exactly after that first episode went up, and two years years later we've almost made it to 2000. It'd be really good to get over that mark in January and really kick off the new year with another minor achievement in growth. We're coming up rapidly on 150,000 total views and just this month we crossed 10 thousand hours watched, which is an enormous amount of time that we've taken up from everybody's lives, and I can only really apologise for having no running cars to show for it. We released more videos this year, and while not quite making the target of 52 that I'd hoped for in 2022, we did manage to put out 38 videos, including this week's one on the kit car that's coming, and I guess 39 if you include this retrospective video, so that's far more than the 27 we did in 2021. Now this year's content has included 28 videos on the project, that includes the kit car, which isn't really a kit car, I'll be brutally honest, uh, the Thunderbird, the Lolf and the SD1, and another six road trip videos, and there's at least that many more, probably even twice that many still to be edited, and we also did three videos from Pedalbox Junction. Now, I'm going to come on to that a little bit later because a few people have been asking, asking questions about that, but we'll get on to that in a bit. 2022 also marked the 100th episode of Pedalbox, which is where we also changed from 1080p to 4K. If people would find it interesting, I'll do a video on all of the equipment that we use uh, to make the episodes, as well as the live streams. We can go through what we used before, why we changed, and ultimately how I have all of this equipment lying around. Let us know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. Maybe we can shuffle that into a wet weather weekend episode sometime in 2023. We've also done 12 shorts this year, and we should probably do more of them. Um, we really need to, because that's what helps the channel grow more as well. YouTube promotes them and the community posts, so if you see us put up a picture on the community tab, or a little uh, release for a video, or something like that, do engage with it, just like it, comment it, whatever. Now, speaking of other things we did last year but haven't done this year, or vice versa, we didn't do any live streams, or we did almost no live streams this year. Um, unfortunately, that's mainly been because this room got used as a massive sorting factory for a bunch of other things. As a result of that, we didn't get around to doing our what was meant to be annual automobile cake-off, which uh, was a bit of a shame. Laurie, I know, was hoping to be in on it, along with Matt, and we were looking to get a load more entries in this year. We might try and get one done for Easter instead of Christmas, just so that we can get something done sooner, and if nothing else, we can test the setup and make sure it all works. So moving on, a few people have asked in the comments about what happened to Pedalbox Junction, and the fact of the matter is it was a victim of weather, which you would think for an indoor project is a little bit weird, but ultimately the whole point of that project was something to do and some content to produce whilst it was wet and cold and raining and just miserable and dark outside, and ultimately by the time we got a couple episodes done, we got up to episode three, started laying some track work and getting on to doing some points, the weather got really nice outside. We thought we better make the most of this whilst we possibly can and actually get some work done on the car. And then it never really got terrible again and actually turned into literally the hottest summer on record in the UK. Now the layout itself is still continuing, I have been doing some work on it because in December it was no more than minus two degrees during the day for about three weeks, so there's a bunch of work been done on that because I did not want to be working on the cars outside in that weather. I looked outside a couple of times, thought better of it, made a short and moved on with my life. So we've got a bunch of videos coming in the new year on the Pedalbox Junction layout. We're hoping to release one a month and just keep that ticking through, probably in the midweek slot. 
And so, with all that out of the way, let's get on to the data and statistics with the rundown of top episodes of Pedalbox in 2022. Looking back at last year's for a quick refresher, number one spot was taken by the 944, a little bit galling, but never mind. The MX-5 took second place, which again, a little bit galling that it wasn't a car from the main body of the channel. And then the SD-1, which is Chris's car, took third and fourth, with my Thunderbird coming in fifth. 6th and 8th was also taken up with shorts from the Thunderbird, and the Golf took 7th, 9th, and 10th, with the project car coming in with episode 1 in 11th spot, which I must admit is a little bit annoying that it didn't make the top 10, but we'll see. I have changed the rules slightly in its favour for this year. This time, I'm not including shorts in the proper top 10, though I am going to give them an honourable mention based on their views. They only get them across a few days just outside of where they get uploaded, so they're a bit of an anomaly across the year, so they're not really representative of what was the top viewed video. Now, you might think that I'm doing this so that the kit car gets a little bit better chance of getting into the top 10, and I can assure you that is merely a happy side effect that I am willing to endorse. So, the top episode is the 944. I doubt anybody is surprised by that. It got 3,800 views. It's been growing and growing all the way across throughout the whole year. And it's a very popular episode. And people like to tell us exactly what we did wrong in that episode by removing the cold air intake and putting on an induction filter. And... A lot of people have told us why that was a terrible idea. Fortunately, we told you why that was a terrible idea at about 50 seconds into the video. Why not have the genuine article? Well, there are reasons why you wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, hot air. Yeah, a cone yeah. filter without a snorkel yeah. is just going to take hot engine bay air. So, I'm not sure how many of them are actually watching all the way through, but it is what it is. I like engagement with the videos, and if they're going to hate watch the video, they're more than welcome to. The next video on the list is putting the coilovers on the MX-5. Again, a lot of people seem to be trying to work out how to do that job effectively, and they end up watching our video as a result. So it has just over 2,300 views, which is really, really good. After that, we've got a rundown of shorts. There's the video that we co-opted LMM, that's Slory's Mechanical Marvel's uh, dump truck, Humpty into our fleet by stickering it up with the pedal box stickers, which you can buy at shop.pedalbox.show. The next one is uh, Oval Racing from Irwindale Speedway. You can watch the whole run of all of that racing now in one 50-odd minute video with the uh, weekly NASCAR kind of amateur series, uh, the Endura Racing, the figure eights, the uh, skid plate racing, and of course the trailer race. So go and watch that after you've seen this one. I'll put a link in the card at the top. After that, it was the video where we triumphantly announced we were going to resurrect the Golf and then didn't. We pulled the engine out and got a load of stuff ready, but that build has really kind of gone a little bit beyond what I was hoping to be able to get away with, and I'll talk about, a bit more about that later on. So the third most watched episode on the channel this year is Pedalbox Junction episode one, when we went through all of the locos and the rolling stock that I've had for many, many years in my parents' loft and seeing exactly what we had to play with. Now in episode four, I'm genuinely surprised it made it up there this quickly, is episode 115, which is finally something from the kit car project. This is when we made up the mop-up list where we went all of the jobs that are 90% done and just have 10% more to be able to tick them off completely and made them into one big list and also did some work on other bits of the car like the dashboard and getting some other stuff sorted. And in fifth is episode 118, which is even more amazing because that only went up last week. That's got 700 views and I think that has a lot to do with the fact it came out when a lot of people are at home over the holidays and have time to catch up on videos. Now moving out of the top five, we have episode 22 from uh, my Mark II Golf VR6 when we installed an OBD2 port. After that, we have a short from the Malcolm Wilson Rally. We went up to the first stage of the year with Ignition Motorsport. They picked up a brand new um, rally car, a Rally Fiesta, took it out. They got it two days before the rally. We went up, videoed some stuff, and for one reason or another, that video hasn't really come to pass. The good news, though, is that was a really good proof of concept, and now we've got next year's run all planned out. So hopefully we can get more video from that, and we can actually bring you some episodes from the Malcolm Wilson Rally. 
Next up in seventh is episode 100, The Kit Car So Far, which is actually proving to be a really big part of this year's top 10, which I am really pleased about. It got just under 600 views, and I think because it is a nice big overview of the whole project, that's what made it really appealing compared to a lot of the other episodes on the channel. That also marks the point at which we switched from 1080 to 4K, so maybe YouTube is pushing the 4K videos a little bit harder. In eighth spot, we've got Pedalbox Junction episode two, where we went out and we looked at all of the track plans that I was hopefully going to put down on this nice big board. That got just under 500 views as well, and that's followed by another short from the end of the day at that first event at the Malcolm Wilson Rally. Ninth on the list, we've got episode 63, when we tore all of the front end off the Thunderbird and stripped it down, ready to really start digging into trying to work out what was going on underneath, pulling all the brackets off, sanding them all down, spraying them, and putting it back together so it didn't just look like a massive rust pile underneath all of the bright work at the front. Finally, in 10th spot, another front end build, this time actually on the kit car. This is when we framed up a lot of the stuff around the radiator and the headlight mounts and started building the whole front end of the kit car as the title suggests, and that got 470-ish views. So I'm really pleased with how much the kit car's been in this, this year's top 10 compared to last year, considering last year it wasn't, and this year it's in three or four times. Uh, if it hadn't, even if I'd kept the shorts in, it probably would have still been in there at least once or twice, which is quite pleasing. So that brings us on to the all-time rundown. Last year's top five was the 944 exhaust and the MX-5 coilover videos, respectively. No real surprise there. Followed by the SD-1 uh, in third and fifth place, and then the Thunderbird in fourth place when we did the brake rebuild. Now, that meant there was no evidence of the kit car in the top five of all time. It got nudged down into sixth place, and that was episode one when we brought that chassis home. So, this year's, what are we expecting? It is exactly the same. And again, it's hardly surprising with the unassailable lead that the 944 and the MX-5 have, and their continued growth this year has just obliterated everything. Same for the other videos. The top five is exactly the same. Sixth place, which was episode one, is now the Golf. That OBD2 build is getting so much attention, apparently people want to see what their VR6s are doing compared to what two people brought home on a trailer. The Golf also comes in at eighth, just after that, on its big brake upgrade. And then the rolling chassis episode, the first time we got four wheels on and we could actually move that around, is in ninth. And then the pedal box episode, where pedal box put a pedal box where the pedal should be on the pedal box channel, and said pedal box a lot, rounds out the top ten of all time for now. So stats aside, how are the project actually doing? What is the outlook for 2023? Well, the Golf engine rebuild, as much as we had great promise that we were going to resurrect it in 2022, we didn't. We tore it down, we did a lot of work, we got the head cleaned, we uh, cleaned up the outside of the block, and then we started making a big list of all of the parts we were going to need to buy. And that parts list rapidly went from being a couple of hundred pound to well over 500, just in really consumable bits. Where I got a decent list up of uh, piston rings, um, shell, uh, bearing shells, head gasket, things of that nature that you would expect was a couple of hundred pounds, rapidly went over 500 when I started including a new clutch because the one in there is pretty much toast. And if I've got the gearbox off at this point with the wear it's on, I might as well put a new one on. And also, the timing chain guide, which uh, Crispy of um, Crispy Projects, I'll put a link again up in the card at the top, he pointed out that it's probably worthwhile looking at the timing chain guides, and sure enough, it really was. It is well over a millimeter worn into that plastic, so that's a whole set of things that needs to be done. That's a hundred and something pound on its own, so that's been added on. So it's basically been collecting up a pile of money to make a pile of parts, and then go and put it all together in one go and do it right. There is a question mark over that though, because whilst we're putting all of these new bits on and it's taken another year to get it done, I really wanted to enjoy the car before I then put a turbo on it. At this point, why don't I just put the turbo on it now? I might as well at this point. I've got it all apart. I'm going to have to take the head off again anyway to put a head spacer on and do all of these bits. It just seems like the right thing to do to just build it now ready for boost and then go and enjoy it with just a mild level of boost, nothing too crazy, just get back used to driving the car again and enjoy it and then maybe gently turn the wick up as we go through the year, assuming we get it all done this year. Now the Thunderbird, after finding all that burnt up crispy wiring earlier this year, is really still putting the fear into me that just as soon as I connect a battery, it will just 
burn itself to the ground. And that, as well as needing a new starter relay because one of the terminals broke off, that's pretty much stuck the project where it is. We've been getting a few bits and pieces done. I really wanted to get the rear quarter panels that I got, I think, four years ago now installed. And ultimately, the weather turned way quicker than I was expecting, so I didn't get that on. And I wanted that done before the winter, but it is what it is. It might come a point where I get somebody in to help me go through and just check the wiring on that is okay before I melt the whole thing into the driveway. So hopefully that'll get done this year. I would like to take it to some events, albeit ones that are not too far away, given it gets between 8 and 10 to the gallon, as far as I can tell. It's a UK gallon as well. And it's about 7 or £8 pounds a gallon of fuel at the moment. Chris's SD1 build is also continuing on. We've got some more episodes kind of partially shot on that. We need to get a few more fill-in pieces just to explain what he's talking about in the video in a little bit more concise way, but they're ready to go. Hopefully, again, we'll have one of those coming each month across 2023 taking all of his build vlog from what was meant to be a fairly simple head unit install and then has gone to a complete interior out strip down uh, and basically soundproofing the whole car. So it's going to sound great, it's going to be really pleasant to be in once it's done, just needs to get back on the road. And finally, of course, there is the kit car. And a lot of people are telling me I do this car a disservice calling it a kit car because it's not a kit car. It is a custom car. But unfortunately, kit car is a lot more searchable on YouTube and gets a lot more traffic than some weird Audi-powered custom thing people on the drive who don't know how to make cars are building. It's a very long search term to look for and very, very specific. Now, there's a lot of stuff that's been happening. We got quite a few episodes filmed in November, which are the ones that are coming out at the moment. There's three or four of those to go, including the one that's coming on Saturday this year. We've also been collecting a bunch more parts as well, so we've got the rest of the intake breather system to go on so we can finally install the filter and get all that sorted. We need to put the rest of the floor in together. We've got a few bits on at the moment which are undergoing intensive weather testing. That is, I forgot to seal part of the end of the phenolic ply. I want to see if it's going to flex, warp and uh, delaminate like the last board that I did. Hopefully it hasn't, and I don't need to build it again. We can put the rest of the floor on and move on all the way through next year. And then by the time next winter comes, maybe it'll have a proper car cover on it. Now, the big problem we have to address on the kit car this year is the handbrake. As somebody pointed out, the hydraulic handbrake probably won't pass the IVA on its own, which is a little bit annoying. But... If we're going to have to put a mechanical one in, I think there's a way we can secrete one of the, or the original handbrake mechanism, down in the cubby on the driver's side and run the uh, Bowden tubes to operate the original factory installed uh, handbrake mechanism on those calipers. So that really needs to be done this year if we're going to have any chance of getting this even on a track, let alone anywhere near road legal. The dashboard's also coming along, and that's another really big milestone. Not because the dashboard will be finished, but because once we've got that done and a, to a point that we don't really need to climb inside it so much, we can actually put the windows in. And putting the glazing in the, that car, the two little quarter lights in the side, and the windscreen across the front is going to make such a massive difference. And I cannot wait to see it. It's going to be so good. But I don't want to get ahead of myself, put those in, and then find that they are massively in the way of finishing up stuff inside that area. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget, subscribe, check out shop.pedalbox.show for merch, as well as Patreon, and we will see you in 2023. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit the notification bell, because that way you'll get notified when the last video of the year goes up on Saturday, where we're working on the kit car once again.